What's up, YouTube? This is your boy, John, from the Jersey Shore, and I am back with you today to give you my review of Rob Zombie's 2005 film, The Devil's Rejects. The Devil's Rejects was both written and directed by Rob Zombie. The Devil's Rejects stars Sherry Moon Zombie, Bill Mosley, William Forsythe, and the late, great Sid Haig as Captain Spaulding. This is truly the most shocking crime scene that this reporter has ever witnessed. For those of you who don't know, this is the sequel to Rob Zombie's House of a Thousand Corpses. So our story begins with a naked dead girl being drugged through the woods by Tiny. Tiny is a character from uh, House of a Thousand Corpses and he is being portrayed by the late great Matthew McCrory. So now we cut away from there and we go to the house. You see a bunch of police pulling up out front of the house. Inside of the house we have Otis and we have Baby and we have Mama and Rufus. Everybody's inside of the house and they're all asleep. Uh, they hear a commotion out front, they look out the windows, and they see that the cops are getting ready to invade the house. So everybody alarmed jumps up, starts grabbing weapons, grabbing guns, and looking out the window. They're all talking back and forth that they got to get the hell out of there, but they got to protect themselves as well. So they start firing at the cops, the cops start firing at them. Brother Rufus actually gets shot. Mama goes to his aid when she sees that he gets shot. Otis and Baby make it out, they escape, and Mama gets captured. Or apprehended, or arrested, whatever way you want to put it, the cops got Mama. I advise you to lower that weapon. So Otis and Baby have managed to escape, and after they put a little bit of distance between themselves and the house, they wind up stealing a car, Baby lays on the road, car pulls up and gets out to help her, Otis comes up behind her and stabs her to death. They steal her car and they may w make their way to a payphone. Once they get to that payphone, now we flash over to Captain Spaulding's house. Spaulding is in the house. He's having some, some coffee with some nasty woman. The house is a complete filthy wreck. Uh, the phone rings. Baby tells him, you know, the cops busted us. We got to meet up at the motel like we always plan. And now Captain Spaulding is on his way. Captain Spaulding is portrayed by the late Sid Haig, and he is the father of Baby and Otis. So while Otis and Baby are waiting for Dad to show up and save the day, they decide that it would be a good idea to get a motel room. You didn't think that they would just rent a room, did you? So Baby comes across what I believe was a traveling band. Uh, in that band, I believe the roadie is Brian Posehn, you would know him. Uh, another character that was involved with this band was one of the women who played, I think, Chrissy's cousin on Three's Company back in the 80s. Baby manages to single out one of the guys that's in this band, and she manages to sweet talk him a little bit, and she winds up back in this guy's motel room with him, his wife, and the rest of the band. Eventually, Oda shows up, and things take a very dark turn very quickly. By the time Captain Spaulding shows up and Otis and Baby are done playing with this band, there's one girl wearing her boyfriend's face, and she's hanging on the back of a door in this motel room. When housekeeping shows up the next morning, this girl manages to get down off of this door and she runs out into the street. She's in a panic and she runs out into the street trying to stop traffic to help her. One car drives past her and when she turns around, she gets splattered all over the blacktop by an oncoming truck. It's pretty gross. So by the time the cops show up and start to scrape this girl up off of the blacktop, the other guys are long gone. Captain Spaulding called his friend Charlie, and now Spaulding, Otis, and Baby are on their way to Charlie's ranch, or brothel, or whatever in the world this thing is. Another pretty important piece of this story that I forgot to mention is Sheriff Wydell. He's John Forsythe's character. He is the one who's hot on the trail of Otis, Captain Spaulding, and Baby. He is the brother of Officer Wydell, who had his brains blown out in House of a Thousand Corpses. So this cop has revenge on his mind a little bit more than he does justice. So once our characters finally make their way to Charlie's ranch, Charlie comes out and he confronts Captain Spaulding. He pretty much tells him, 
you're not welcome here and what are you doing here? He's basically just busting his balls. He shoots him in the face with a water gun and they embrace. They're, it's very obvious that he was messing with them. So while these guys are all in there kissing and making up and partying and having a great time and meeting up with hookers and then, like I said, this thing was a brothel, you see a scene where uh, Sheriff Wydell has hired two hitmen to catch up to these uh, three characters, Spalding, Fa Otis, and Baby, because he knows that they're the ones responsible for killing his brother. The two guys that he hires, one of them is DDP, Diamond Dallas Page, and the other one is Danny Trejo. So after a little bit of time passes, all three of our characters, Otis and Baby and Captain Spaulding, are completely out of their minds, drunk and high. Uh, eventually, Danny Trejo and DDP show up, uh, Officer Wydell shows up, or Sheriff Wydell shows up. Basically, everything is now coming to a head at this ranch. I definitely thought that this was one of Rob Zombie's better movies. Uh, this is the second movie that he made. This was the direct sequel to House of a Thousand Corpses, which I absolutely loved. This was a, a, a wonderful cast in this movie as well. You have the, the regular three characters with uh, Sid Haig, Bill Mosley, Sherry Moon Zombie. This is before Sherry Moon Zombie started driving me completely crazy. Then you have William Forsythe, you had Danny Trejo, you had Diamond Dallas Page, Brian Posehn, uh, Ken Foray, the late Matthew McGrory. I mean, I'm sure that there's some things in here that I could pick apart if I wanted to. Uh, the Rob Zombie characters, uh, the character building that he does in his movies just makes you, you almost just dislike everybody in his movies. Uh, I like this movie. I like several of his movies, but I don't particularly care for any of the characters in most of his movies. It's a very strange thing. He does, he tells a decent story, but he makes you really dislike the characters. They, they're all just overly foul-mouthed and, and completely immoral, like all of them. In this movie, the heroes in this movie are serial killer murderers. It's, uh, it's, they're absolutely, positively dreadful people. I like this movie. I like the story. I don't necessarily like any of the characters. It's a very weird dynamic that he creates in his movies. It's very weird. You, you really find yourself pulling for completely moralist scumbag killers in his movies. Well, not all of his movies, but this film series for sure. Obviously, the three characters, the, the three main characters in this movie uh, came over from the previous movie. But what this film is, is the introduction to a lot of the characters that appear, or not characters, the actors that appear in a lot of his movies later on uh, down the line. William Forsythe is in this. He was in Rob Zombie's Halloween. Um, Danny Trejo was in this. He was in Rob Zombie's Halloween. Ken Foray was in this. He was in Rob Zombie's Halloween. And he was in The Lords of Salem. It, it's just, he uses a lot of the same actors in his movies, and this is the beginning of that trend. There's a lot that I did like about this movie, but if I had to single anything out whatsoever, I would say that the closing scene to this movie is one of my two or three favorite scenes that Rob Zombie has shot throughout the entire seven movies that he has made. I don't want to say exactly what that is because I don't want to spoil it for anybody out there who has not seen this movie, but it's really cool. There's a lot of, it's a very dramatic scene. Um, it's, there, it's shot in a way that it's regular speed and it's slow motion and it's sped up. And while all this is going on, Freebird's playing. And who don't like Freebird? So the Devil's Rejects. There are some people out there who absolutely just do not like anything that Rob Zombie does. There are some people out there who like absolutely everything that Rob Zombie does. I'm sort of in between in there. Some of his movies, I, I just flat out did not like them. Some of his stuff, I've absolutely loved. This particular movie, I really enjoyed this movie. If you have not seen The Devil's Rejects, give this one a shot. I thought it was really, really good. All right, folks, that is going to do it for my review of Rob Zombie's 2005 film, The Devil's Rejects. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you really like this video and you have been enjoying my content, please do me a huge favor. Click that subscribe button, and once you do click that subscribe button, remember to ring that notification bell. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Have a kick-ass day, and thank you for watching.